Welcome to CarCast, Matt, the motorator, DeAndrea here. So uh, Bill Goldberg is out today. He's uh, dealing with some family stuff, but no problem. We'll get him back soon. I, I know he had a quick little stint out here to L.A. for uh, WrestleMania, did a WrestleCon, and and he likes to, like, fly in and then leave immediately. I didn't even get a chance to to hang out with him, but uh, we'll, we'll catch up with him again uh, soon. But, uh, man, uh Leading up to Grand Prix of Long Beach, I want to invite our old friend, uh, not that old, <laughs> not personally yeah. old, just a while, uh, Graham Rahal, uh, back to the show. How are you, Graham? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I am getting older, by the way. <laughs> in, all, a, in, a hur- <laughs> in a hurry, I feel like. so. We are, we're all getting a little older. Um, I just want to jump into this real quick. How are you feeling? I watched the Texas race. A little bit of a crash going on there. Um, I know you were bummed about it. We even heard you on the radio. Really no place to go. Yeah. Uh, I I watched it. And when it happened, I saw the front end of your car lift. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck. And then no, luckily that well, thing came too. down. <laughs> me too. Yeah. I was telling somebody that it's so weird how that happens. But literally, I had enough time to think about it. While when the front went up, all I thought about. I haven't even told my wife this, but all that I thought about was my wife, my two girls. And I was like, just please get the nose down before the fence, you know, and that it, it, that it's weird in that moment. Cause it's only, you know, a second or two seconds that you're kind of doing that. Uh, but a lot of things flash through your brain in a hurry. So uh, actually, you know, it's, it's incredible. You know, you, you have something like that. And here I am a few days later, no soreness, never was sore, never had any aches, never had any aches, any pains. The cars have just come so far from, you know, where they were at one point. I mean, the doctor called me the morning after the IndyCar doctor, Dr. Visor, who's a stud. She's, she's, she's a rock star. It's as as good as they get. And she said, Hey, I just want to check on you. You know, everything good. You know, your hit was 98 G's. And I was like, Holy shit. I mean, that's a lot, you know, but Yet somehow, you know, you do that and you don't have any any pain. So it's come a long way. We feel good. We're super disappointed about Texas, frankly, just not not a good performance uh, from us as, a, as an organization. But, um, you know, we we are clearly in a stage where we're doing a lot of uh, of, of soul searching and, and uh, I think we'll be able to come out in, in good form. Uh, but we're excited for Long Beach for sure, man. I was thinking this morning to my 17th Long Beach. Uh, Right. Yeah. It's gone by in a hurry. Pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, we we chatted I think a few times back when we were doing the Newman doc when Adam Kroll and I were yeah. the Newman doc and we were filming that in 2015, I think. We were yeah. mostly putting that together and it just it seemed like not that long ago, going on it like goes, 8 years now since since goes just by that so doc. Fast. Yeah, it goes by so fast and uh you know, I remember remember those days well. Obviously, remember the Newman Newman days extremely well. Um, you know, special time in my life to be to get to spend time with him and be exposed. But yeah, I mean, racing years are they're tough years, frankly. I mean, they wear they wear on you, but they go by fast too. And uh, you know, to think we're about to hit the really kind of busy point in the NTT IndyCar series with start up here uh, right after Easter with Long Beach, and then uh, that's race number three in the year. But then we pretty much go from then till. I mean, yeah. certainly through May is almost every weekend. June is almost every weekend. July, you have three races. So uh, it's going to be a blur from here on out. Tell me about some of the uh, the changes that the team's been made. I, you know, I've been reading about some some staff changes, a little bit of overhauling back at RLL, and um, but also, you know, during the off season, I mean, finished up the new building. Uh, I know your dad would was super proud of that and, yeah. and and separate from the things that you're doing on your own which we'll get into a little bit but yeah the team itself is is has grown and it's making some changes and we are you know we're growing things are changing but you know we're we're trying we're like i said a second there's a lot of soul searching that goes on with that too you know when you bring in a lot of new people there's a lot of different ideas there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat you got to start to work together to find 
you know, what's going to be our way, what's going to be our identity as a team and how are we going to do that? Um, you know, it's just like in, in any other major sport, you take an all-star team and put them together. Rarely, rarely does it just click. Um, right. You know, I'm a big hockey fan. And like right now uh, you watch the Rangers, for instance, and uh, there's no more talent on the face of the earth than <laughs> there is in the Rangers. But the first few games, they kind of played terrible. You know, it took them a while to get things sorted out. It's how we are, I think. You know, we've got a lot of good people, um, but we've got to find a way for, to get everybody in a cohesive direction. Um, you know, you, you look at St. Pete, we finished sixth. Um, you know, Christian was ninth. Jack had a tough go. Uh, but, you know, the cars were better in the race. We were able to move forward. We were able to have a pretty competitive day. Obviously, Texas didn't go the way uh, the way that we want it. Um, but you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. You know, the season is still young. There's a lot that can be done and handled between now and, and, and Laguna Seca, uh, to finish the year off. So we'll see. You know, uh, as you said, the schedule is going to get real busy. Grand Prix of Long Beach is, uh, it's an interesting event because it, for us out here, you know, it's, you know, they, they start, I don't know, several months in, in advance of getting that track ready, getting that track built. It's not, it's not really a turnkey situation because you guys are running around in the streets out there. And, yeah. And, uh, and they turn it into a, you know, a, a week long event. There's, you know, there's drifting that happens and then uh, the vintage race out there, they get the sports cars out there. And then yeah. after you guys run on Sunday, they bring out the trophy trucks on the, on the asphalt, which by the way, I don't know if you ever get a chance to even watch it. Cause you're just finishing an Indy car race, but I watch a, a little bit. It's, it's a, it's a trip to, to watch. No, I know. I know those guys, <laughs> it is a riot to watch them. Um, I always, and, and Robbie Gordon always, uh, he got really pissed at me a few years ago. Cause I said this, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a great show. They just beat the, you know what, out of the track. And so they used to run. That's why they run last. (laughs) Yeah. They used to run right before us and we'd go out and there's like curbs missing and grass all over the place. And not a Long Beach, but other places we race. It's like, okay, I get this is entertaining, but (laughs) we need to, we need to find a better time for this. But yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, putting the ramps down and jumping through the streets. It's uh, it's cool stuff. And Robbie's done a great job building a, a series that's got some sustainability there. I mean, people are, it's good entertainment, you know, and people want to go out and do it and, uh, and have some fun. But um, no, I mean, Long Beach is, um, it's as good as it gets, you know, when you look at the United States and you look at, uh, you know, Grand Prix style racing, uh, the Long Beach Grand Prix is, uh, you know, the longest standing best um, street course that there is. And, and I would also just say that it has the best group behind it. I mean, Jim McKaylee and the promoter, uh, he's done it for probably the whole time, pretty much. But yeah. he's the man. I mean, he knows how to put on a good show and knows it, it's like clockwork now. I mean, that's the thing when you go to other new uh, street course races or when we do, people are always, oh, you know, they, you know, they they want to talk about all the bad stuff. So well, Long Beach wasn't built in a day, right? Just like Rome, right. it's not built in yeah, a day. Right. It takes time. And, you know, here you are, what, year 45 or maybe more now of, of the Long Beach Grand Prix. And uh, it's as good as it gets. Do, do the other cars that go out there, we we, we ask this question a lot, a lot when it comes to the Grand Prix of Long Beach because um, they used to do the celebrity races. They did it for a long time. I don't know, like 40 years or something. And uh, Goldberg's participated in it. Adam Cole has participated in it several times. Um, funny story with Goldberg. He got so frustrated during one of the one of the races. Um, I, I think somebody, I forgot who it was. Um, I think it was Dara Torres, the Olympian. Uh, oh yeah, she's the same yeah. one that 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 crashed Adam off the race. I think years I, ago I, I, she wrecked yes. Goldberg, and Goldberg got out of the car and he was mad, and he and he hits like the driver's side mirror, and it and breaks it broke. off the car. And he I goes remember. in and then he didn't tell anybody later. Uh, here we are years later. We could tell the story. He walks in and I forgot who was there for his wife or his manager. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry about the accident. And he's like, I'm pretty sure I just broke my hand. <laughs> he gets smacking uh-huh. that thing off. He, he yeah. broke his hand. He breaks a lot That's of things. Crazy. He broke his hand doing it. Um, but the question was all the week long races, especially the drifting ahead of time. Yeah. Does it screw up the track for you guys or does it kind of make it? A, the drifting does a little bit. 
Um, but I, I mean, I get it in Southern California, the drift scene is really, really big too, you know, but, uh, yeah, the drifting does a little bit because it, it puts a layer of rubber on the track that is for some reason for us is like ice. And it also creates uh, a marble, a marbly area yeah. uh, of, yeah. of the, the, t- the tire rubber that never really gets cleaned up. And so uh, if you get offline, which we've, I've, I've had it a couple of years ago, I crashed in turn nine and in, in practice. Uh, but then I know Colton Herta crashed last year, I think in turn nine, or maybe it was the year before you get just a hair offline, it's ice. And that mostly is the drift rubber for us. So um, it, it just is, it doesn't ruin the track. It's just different in the way that, right. that you, you've got to be prepared for that and know what you're getting into. And it's also only for them is only in certain areas. Really, it's the last part of the track, turn nine, 10, 11 in the hairpin uh, is where you get, you know, all the drift rubber. Um, so you, you've got to know that and be prepared for that as well. But you know, typically on a, on a weekend like Long Beach, when you have the sports cars, IMSA sports cars with us as well, that's a pretty compatible style of rubber. Yeah. Uh, so for us, it, it works well when you go race day, you know, nothing's changed too much. I think we sat down with with Tanner Faust at one point and, you know, Adam's always picking his brain. He's like, hey, I'm doing the celebrity race. You know, uh, what should I be aware of? He's like, well. Now, back when the schedule, I think, was different, I think they ran drifting the same weekend as the celebrity race. Yeah. Um, and he's like, you're going right out there after the drift guys who are there in the morning. And on on those cars, like the Scions and, and the Toyotas, whatever they were running. Yeah. I guess it sticks better to that rubber. So he was like, oh, in this corner, in this corner, go flat out because the drifters laid down rubber and you'll stick like glue. It's, it's a little different. It's probably more um, compatible. I would say it's all some more like streetcar rubber, you know, typically yeah. uh, versus, you know, the way that the racing compounds are, but that's no big deal. I mean, like I said, it's part of the game. Um, we're yeah. all used to it now where we've all, uh, you know, it ha- it's been, it's the, the same formula uh, of, of events and everything else has been, uh, on the docket at Long Beach for an extended period of time now. So, uh, frankly, uh, no major surprises there. It seems like that track is sort of like attrition. It's kind of a process of elimination. The Big hairpin, time. dive bombing, it's just like, if you can get through that track without hitting anything, it, you're it, probably going to do really well in that race. It, it's as hard as they come. Um, that race is as hard as they come. It's a it's a fast street course. Uh, it's bumpy. And it's kind of bumpy in the wrong areas, um, frankly. It's, uh, you know, like into one is is super bumpy. Uh, into f- five, which is this right-hander that goes onto the back straight, is like might as well be going over a ramp in an Indy car. Uh, turn eight, they paved it, so it's smooth now. But it's so fast that there's no margin for error. Into nine, which is the end of the back straightaway, mm-hmm. Um I mean, we've all crashed there before, so uh, that's part of it. But, you know, it's just a, it's a challenging place. And nowadays it's harder because, you know, we race it at, at 10 tenths every lap. That wasn't always the case. Even early in my career, you would go out and it would become fuel strategy. And it was like, OK, everybody's lifting at the end of the pit wall on the front straight to save fuel. Everybody's got to do this and this. And you were kind of driving at 70, 80 percent in my dad's era. There was probably even more, and he'll even fess up to this, that that the cars weren't as reliable as they are today. Yeah. So in the races, you had to kind of take care of your equipment. Today, the cars run. So you drive the piss out of it for the whole race. I mean, you don't, you know, you drive hard. And the level of competition is so deep. I mean, you're legitimately, you're 20 cars deep every weekend that could win. And people think I'm not yeah. going to say that, but it's true. Um and so when one team, even a small team like Young Coast Racing, uh, I mean, they were fast as hell at, at Texas. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Callum Eilat, who's one of their drivers, finished fifth at, at St. Pete. And Callum was next in line to be Ferrari Formula One driver, literally. Um, and they went and hired signs instead. And uh, so Callum came over here. But the guy's top, 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 top level talent. And so the depth of the field is so, so big that, uh, I mean, it's, it's as hard as it gets, um, you know, and so it's, that race is, is majorly challenging. It's very physical, uh, mentally taxing. 
Uh, but it's always uh, just a great place, a great vibe, a great environment to go. Huge crowds, um, you know, good food in town. So it's kind of a fun place for many yeah. of us to go. How do you like the road courses versus the ovals? Now, take the fanfare out of it, right? Because that's that's a big part of it, right? Yeah. Like just ovals versus yeah. versus road course. Well, the fanfare side is that ovals, aside from Indy, ovals just don't bring the crowds anymore. Uh, and NASCAR seeing that too. Uh, ovals are a challenge. Um, but a good car, a good race car on an oval is more fun than anything you could ever do on a road course. People think I'm nuts I said, but like if you look at like the Texas race last week, if you yeah. were Pato or if you were Joseph or if you were Palo, the guy or even Felix before his accident, the guys that were really hooked up, just driving inside, outside, all over, you know how much fun that is? Like when it's on rails on an oval, it's pretty well unbeatable. So, I mean, I love a good challenge like Road America, really fast corners mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, but uh, but the fun factor. Now, the flip side of that is if it's bad on an oval, you just want to go home. It's as it's <laughs> yeah. as bad as it gets. Whereas if it's bad on a road course, it's like, OK. We just got to get through the race and we'll move on and improve on an oval. Every lap, every corner, you're holding your breath. So a little yeah. bit different. Okay. Then you add the fanfare back into it. You've got Indy 500. That's uh, uh, just, it It grew into That's... being the, the thing, but you know, there is Grand Prix of Long Beach. There's, there's some pretty prestigious events. Yeah. Like, you know, listen, look at the, I know you're, you're super into cars like the rest of us. And we yeah. you look at collector cars like we do. A collector car, a collector racing car with, I would even argue if you go, hey, this is a championship IMSA car. And then yeah. you go, but it won Sebring or it won Le Mans. All of a sudden, yep. it's worth 30% more money, right? Yep. Just because yeah. of those events. It's yeah. all the fan for the prestige of those events. Yeah. I mean, nothing touches the 500 for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think for anybody really. I mean, I think the 500 still on a worldwide scale is is viewed and respected internationally as being, you know, the biggest single day race in the world. Obviously, Le Mans is tremendous. Uh, for those who have or haven't been, you know that. And if you haven't been, it's very cool to go check out. Um, but, you know, from a fanfare perspective, you know, you're spot on. I mean, Long Beach is great. Um Long you Beach know, is Road, a great big party, and it's fun. Road America. Road yeah. America is really good. You know, everybody's camping out. You drive around on the scooter, or the golf cart on a Saturday night. You're going to laugh your tail off at all the the idiotic stuff that you see going on. That's that's always a great time. Um, you know, so they they've done a really good job. The road courses definitely moved the needle more on the mm -hmm. fanfare side um, than than what we've seen traditionally. But you know, on the ovals, obviously at Iowa right now, which is not where everybody thinks of as being the best outside of Indy, the best race high V, which is one of our team sponsors. I mean, they've blown it out of the water with what they do there. I mean, the concerts, I mean, this year you have Ed Sheeran, yeah. Carrie Underwood, Kenny Chesney and Zach Brown band all on one weekend. So you have a double header race weekend, plus those four concerts before and after each race. You can't get any better than that. Yeah, so they're definitely huge. moving the needle in that regard. Aside from IndyCar, have you, have you, do you have your sights set on some other forms of racing? I would love to go to Le Mans someday. Yeah. Um, I would love to go to Le Mans someday. I think that that would be tremendous. I would love to, I would love to, uh, um, I'd love to win Sebring. Yeah. I've won Daytona. I'd love to win Daytona again overall. Uh, I would love to win Sebring. And if I could get to Le Mans and get a shot at that, it would be tremendous. What would you like In to drive at Le Mans? You, one of the prototypes, one of the LMP cars, or one of the sports cars, or, or, well, or what? Like From a fun yeah. side, of course, a prototype. Yeah. Um, but you know me, and I know me. And, I mean, the BMW prototype we run in the United States, and there's no way in hell I'm going to fit in that thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm six foot gonna... three. Yeah. I mean, they just, th these cars are getting back to being built so small inside. Um, 
that, you know, the drivers are prototypical five foot six to five foot nine. They're my height. They're like jockeys. 140, 150, 160 pounds maximum. And that's where sports car racing is tough for a guy like me versus IndyCar is that an IndyCar, the car is built for me. The weight is adjusted for me. Uh, Whereas in a sports car, I I was teammates with Elio one year in the Acura. I'm carrying around an extra 50 pounds. And on the track, you better believe 50 pounds makes a difference on the stopwatch, you know. So um, to match his times or to be as competitive was freaking hard. Uh, But they don't have an equivalency like that. So uh, that that is definitely more of a, you know, more of a challenge. But, of course, the prototypes are what everybody wants to drive. You know, they're they're the top dog. Interesting you say that. I was going to ask because uh, I was just thinking about it. Like the drivers, so many of the drivers today are like jockeys. But I, I asked Tommy Kendall all the time too. It's like, Tommy, how come you're not, you know, going to Monterey with us and driving yeah. the vintage whatever? And he's like, ah, I don't fit in it. He's like, I'm already. Well, it's a real I'm thing. Moving slowly. <laughs> yeah, know, it's just... a real thing for us. It's uh, we always at the end of every text and everything that Tommy or email that Tommy and I send back and forth. We just yeah. put SDS, which means short drivers suck. <laughs> and uh, and you know that's that, but it's real. I mean, there are definitely cars that I I want to drive, and I gone, and I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Like I, this isn't going to work for me. Yeah, and in fact from year one to year two of the Acura prototype program with Penske, I was supposed to stay. Um, And I actually pulled out myself um, because I had a moment at Petit Le Mans in year one. And I went off, not bad, a little bit Um, cost me maybe four or five seconds on one lap. But what happened was the car snapped loose. I couldn't correct it. I just hit my knee. You know, my, my legs were so high. I couldn't ca- So when you drive a car like that, yeah, you can't give your all, you, you know, you can't, you can't give everything, every ounce of what I've got to give. And so I ended up bailing out of that program. Then the, then the next petite Le Mans, I go back and drive again for him because Rossi went down to uh, run the V8 supercar and I go back to drive it. And they had moved the steering wheel up. They had made changes that they told me they couldn't be your, otherwise I would have never pulled my name out of the hat. But they made all these changes and, uh, you know, it was better. But that's the thing is you've got to make it so that it works so that you can give your all. Otherwise, you're just a detraction, you know, from 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 what, you know, what it, it can be capable of. Yeah, right. Right. OK, so um, I know you're <laughs> I appreciate you calling it in. Uh, I know you're on vacation, getting a little bit of uh, oh, you're fine, yeah. b- between Texas and uh, and Long Beach. Uh, how's the family? Everybody's good. Family's good. Yeah. Everybody's New good. Baby. Growing. Got a seven month old, um, two year old who's right in here screaming. I can hear uh, character. Um, but no, everything's good. Family's good. Courtney's good. Um, no, no complaints. I I would be remiss if I didn't ask, but uh, are we going to see Courtney race anymore? You know, I don't know. Uh, my gut says no. Um but it's ultimately going to be, you know, up to her on what she so decides to do. And, uh, uh, but I, I, you know, certainly right now, I know with the two kids and stuff, we both have our hands absolutely, you know, full, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's really up to her and what she wants to do. And, and, uh, um, you know, I know that they, I know the fire is still there for yeah. sure. Right. Uh, it just comes down to timing and everything else for right. sure. It's it's a big commitment to do it. This isn't it's not like a hobby, like what you're talking about. Like, you know, this isn't, hey, we're gonna go to two vintage races a year and have a little fun and pull something out of the collection. This is it's a big it's a big commitment and yeah. risky and, and you know, and but, it's a business that's people forget that it's there's a there's a business involved. For sure. And once you have, you know, and once you have the kids involved too, in our lives, that becomes harder, but yeah, you know, for us, um, you know, without a doubt, we, you know, I think that the, the life that we lived prior to kids, when both of us were racing, it was just purely travel. I mean, that's all we did. Yeah. Whether it was appearances, whether it was races, whether it was tests, whether it was back and forth to California to Indy where, you know, we lived between the two places and, uh, that's not a lifestyle you can live with kids. 
It's just not. It's yeah. it's you know unless you got a private plane and everything else, which still it would be held, but um, but more achieve, more manageable. But you know for us, we'll, we'll we'll see how it all plays out. I know you know for Courtney, it was uh, the family part of that is so massive. Um, you know, obviously out there racing, so, so we'll just see how it all plays out. Right. Right. Okay. Um. All right. So aside from racing, you're, you got your hands into a bunch of different things. Um, I'm going to rattle off a few things real quick, and then we can get into some of these things. We've got Graham Ray Hall performance. We've got two Ducati dealers that I know of. <laughs> We've got uh, Ray Hall paint protection, which is pretty new, right? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the Graham and Courtney Ray Hall foundation. You still have that going on. Uh, and then, Behind the scenes, you're building a new building. You're getting more involved with uh, Bobby Ray Hall Automotive Group. I don't know if you've been buying into that more or starting your own or doing a bit of both, but uh, I don't even know where to start. Graham Ray Hall Performance. Let's start there. Yeah, so the performance shop's been great. I'd never anticipated that it would grow the way that it has. Um, you know, I think really with with all the specialty vehicles and everything else that we sell and, and have uh, – available to us it's that's been tremendous um you know you name it we do it you want to rebuild it we do it you want performance upgrades but it started as a tuner shop right you're it doing... did it did it did it started just like basic tuner stuff you know installing hre wheels or yeah sport spring setups or exhaust you know now i mean now it's even gone as far as you know to where we are uh, manufacturing our own products. Um, I'm looking for a photo to show you, but like, you know, even yesterday, this is, uh, uh, I don't know if this will show up, but like a, a career, oh, I'll probably won't because my zoom, yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah, it comes up blurry because you know, like we're just manufactured a career GT exhaust system. We're doing all these new center lock, um, you know, custom center locks on our recommission projects. So there's a lot of fabrication now that we didn't originally anticipate doing um so that's good that's been busy the ducati stuff's just a lifelong passion um you know when i was a kid dad always had whatever the the freshest shiniest new rattle was in the ducati yeah. world and their artwork you know to me it, that's that's sex on wheels it's about as good as it gets and so uh that's you know that's uh i definitely enjoy enjoy that business it's tough tougher in indiana than say southern california i can tell you that but uh, but we're making the most of it. I think we're doing a pretty good job there. Um, oh, by the way, how cool is the Ducati bicycle? Like, yeah, it's sweet. That's it's cool. Sweet. That thing's that thing's rad, right? On road and off road. The off road one, the 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 TKO one, the RR limited edition is ridiculous. Like yeah. it is sweet. It is so 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 cool. So uh, that's you know we actually have several of those in stock. And again, in Indiana, they're not selling as good as I would have liked, but. Uh, whatever, you know, they're, they're, they're badass bikes. So, uh, we're excited about that. And then, you know, the paint protection thing was just a company we acquired last year. Um, it went through some tough times and it was a great opportunity for us. Uh, we were doing a ton of business with them prior anyway. Uh, and it just made sense, you know, for us to, 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 to acquire it. Uh, and, and, uh, and so we did, and, um, and that's been huge. We're adding our second one of those, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. So we'll have Indianapolis and Cleveland, Ohio, which would be great. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. And yeah, on the automotive dealership side, I, I've been buying in for sure. Um, so I think I'm up to six stores that I have a part of or seven, seven, maybe that I have a part of, how many, uh, which how is many cool. stores are part of the automotive group. And we have 16 total franchises or 19 franchises, 16 rooftops. Um, I'd have to recount because we did add another Volvo dealership and, uh, we're built, built, just built another, uh, Lexus store out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I'd have to maybe run back through that, but off the top of my head, that's yeah. where we're at. And, uh, and so that's been a lot of fun for, for, you know, dad for the last 35 years. And now it's kind of time for, for me to step up and start to, uh, to help. Hey. It seems like your your dad's plate is pretty full with the racing team, but uh, I mean, we've talked so much about all the things that you're into. What what does the day in the life of Bobby Ray Hall look like? That guy doesn't stop ever. Right? Yeah, 
And he, you, you know we're doing the Ray Hall doc. You, I, of course, you. Yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, part one of the one of the new films we're we're into is the Bobby Ray Hall doc and a Dan Gurney doc. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Dan, both of those are cool. Yeah, and dads, dads, if you guys need stories, just I'm sure. Yes, it's good. now it's not so, that I have them; it's that I know how to get them out of him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them there. Uh, but, and you know, he, I think he, I think Adam has. Adam sat down with with Gurney uh, a while ago, and I think we have the last filmed interview with him, which we used in other docs. But then we realized we it would be it would be better to to use all of that footage oh, now and use it in a doc. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. So what, cool. what is what does a day of Bobby well, Ray Hall look like? Yeah, you know, I just think Dad just he just doesn't stop. He just doesn't slow down. He tries to, uh, but. He's so addicted to this stuff and and to to working and to succeeding that, uh, you know, I mean, te- he was at Texas. And then one day later, I heard he was up in India at the shop meeting with everybody. And then last night he was having an inter- or meeting with, with with some folks in Indianapolis. I didn't even know he was there. I mean, this is only a, a, a day or two after the Texas race. And you think he'd go back and unwind where he lives in Florida. Uh, yeah. Got out of Chicago just in the nick of time, it seems. Um but you know, for me, it's like I don't. He, he just he just doesn't stop, and he's just not wired that way. And so, uh, uh, but we're lucky to have him, and um, you know, he's doing well though. I mean, he's had just about every body component you could have replaced, replaced, and uh, you yeah. know, back, knee, hip, whatever, heart. Uh, so he's he's in a better place now, and 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 hopefully get another hundred thousand miles out of him. Yeah. It's good. I'm looking forward to uh to to seeing him and all you guys at, at, in Long Beach. But uh wanted to see how we're doing because we're excited about the doc. I think it's gonna be a fun piece and uh it's it it has to have a little controversy because uh that's what makes it exciting. And for sure. There's plenty with there's him. gonna be plenty of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with him and obviously the Andretti's in particular, that was always a known thing. Um, you know, that's real. I think that the, 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 I don't want to use the word hatred because that's not, I think there's a, there's a very high level of respect there, but the competitive nature between the two was always, or the three of them was always very, very high, um, you know, and, and that, that's a real thing for sure. I was just out at Pomona this uh, past weekend at NHRA and uh, uh, hanging out with some of friends over there, Ron Caps and, and, um, the crew over at elite motorsports and, yeah. and stuff. And uh, I always go to them and I go, you know, I always love about drag racing is the camaraderie among the teams, because it seems like everybody just wants to fuel the fire and just make drag racing better. And they, every one of them laughs at me and goes, yeah, 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 there's, there's some of that, but believe me, there's some competitiveness going on for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. Of course there has to be, but it, it it does look like from the outside, at, at least everyone there seems to be pretty much on the same page when it comes to the public perception to grow that sport and keep that sport alive. Yeah. And I think that, that's an important part of, of, of sports, of racing, of, yeah. sports, of, of anything. I, I think for them, that's, that's, they're in a pretty critical time too. You know, there's a lot of changes happening. Uh, with combustion engine, as we all know, and yeah, uh, drag racing wouldn't be the same without the noise. I think that's the reality. Um, and so they uh, they're in a critical time of of trying to keep their identity and push forward. And I do think they all do a great job of of understanding that and understanding what's best for the the entire sport and the organization and pushing the needle and pushing it forward for sure. Well, I. Uh like it or not i would say that uh tony stewart getting involved um does bring uh does bring new fans over there just to to see what what he wants to do I, what he's doing I, 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 I thought it was i i like that he start, started with the alcohol cars and 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 kind of took it from there um so we'll we'll see where he goes with that yeah i mean who knows the, the biggest challenge that they have and tony does help this but it's just aging team owners Right. If you look at and drivers, if you look at the sport, the majority of them, t- at least in the top classes, cars are owned by either John, Kalita, yeah, Schumacher, which he's out but still involved yeah. with Maynard or whatever, 
Um, but you know, to, to your point, Ron Caps went out on his own, started his own team. Antron Brown just started his own team. He finally left, and and those did, guys are kind of yeah, did their own for ship. sure, for sure. Um, but they still like those guys are all, I, I, you know, they're all still based at Don Schumacher's shop. You know, there's still a lot of help that support there. Yeah, that I'm not discounting them because I think it's a brave move. And I told AB that before he did. I was like, yeah. brother. <laughs> you you just want to be a driver, you know. Just, but I'm just saying there's there's a lot of change that's coming there um, that needs to come there and is is starting. Uh, so hopefully the, the the next handful of years uh, can create a lot of that and uh, and put them in a brighter spot as they go forward uh, for sure. But IndyCar is in the same position. I mean, you look obviously you got you know Ganassi, Penske, and Andretti owns a lot of the cars, uh, but we're finally really starting to see. Junko's holding her, uh, some smaller teams. Um, I know there's a couple more coming for the 500 that are jumping in that are new teams that are definitely capable. You look at McLaren. I mean, that was a pretty new team uh, with, with uh, Schmidt. Schmidt was always just a Indy Lights team in, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, stepped up in a big, big way and have done a great job. Obviously, Shank is out there running around with a couple of cars. So, you know, there, there's a lot of new blood, which young blood, which is good for the sport, too. Yeah. You know, I, as you mentioned, some of the older team owners that are out there, it kind of makes you wonder. Racing, almost all forms of racing, has always sort of been homegrown and family business, and we're seeing yeah. generations of it. Uh, I don't, I don't want to lose that, but at some point, do you see, I don't know, private equity coming in and going, "Hey, you know, listen, you're you're seventy five years old. Do you want to keep running this team for a while?" you know, what's, what's the plan and well, you know, what if we uh, buy it? And, and, you know, who I mean, knows kind of sports franchise ish, you know? Yeah. That's definitely part of the play um, that, that is coming, that people are starting to see in our sport. Uh, but who, who knows what's going to happen in the future? I mean, uh, as much as I wish everyone, well, a PE firm buying a race team is probably would be their worst investment they've ever met <laughs> uh, or made. Um, the old saying, you know, how do you, how do you make a small fortune in racing as you start with a big one is still true. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that's part of the game. You know, you get into it for the love of it. And I think that's, what's maybe a little different about racing than most other, uh, sports, uh, and franchises. But, uh, ultimately, um, you know, we're, we're excited for the future, you know, in IndyCar, I think it's bright, um, even with, with Roger's age and everything else, you've got Greg who's ready to step up and Greg is, is a good of a man as you'll find. And uh, we're excited by that. Yeah. Well, listen, I'll get back, let you get back to your vacation real quick. Tell us about the, the, the foundation that you're working on the Graham and Ray Hall, uh, the Graham and Courtney Ray Hall foundation. Uh, I want to make sure we, we, we plug that as well, because I know you've got yeah. a lot of uh, high hopes for that and a little bit of Paul Newman influence there as well. Yeah, so it was all Paul. Paul, it started with Paul uh, when he passed away in 08, September of 08. I decided to start the foundation in May of 09. And uh, right now, our main focus is veterans and, and cancer research. Um, so we, we support two primary causes. One is a Soldier Strong. Uh, so we provide exoskeletons, uh, VR technology, uh, basically advanced technologies to uh, injured, um, uh, whether it be paralyzed, whether it be PTSD um uh treatments uh for for veterans when they come back home and then on the flip side of that is we work with colorado state university and their one cure which is a cancer research group um on dogs uh using comparative oncology to to uh, uh to find a cure in humans and so we are courtney and i uh and all of our donors uh, that support us uh, we are directly funding the lasardin trial which is the first ever clinical trial of a cancer treatment found in dogs on humans and it's on kids um, for bone cancer. So it used to be if kids got bone cancer, it was a uh, terminal illness. Um, that's not the case anymore. And we're making a difference and we're moving the needle. Uh, we've had such good success at Denver Children's Hospital. They've added Atlanta Children's Hospital. Now we're looking for a third and fourth hospital to add this year. Um, and so we're excited by that. And, we, you know, that gives us a lot of pride to, to see that we're making a difference there. Yeah. That's uh, that's very exciting to hear. I, I appreciate that a lot. And, you know, as you know, 
we have a little startup company over here, Bravago, our, our hard seltzer company. We've got some more products going to come out hopefully later this year. But uh, we've been talking about it internally, trying to find a way uh, when, you know, we got to grow the business and re reinvest in the business, but we want to be able to start being able to participate. So I can definitely see a future where Bravago starts uh, contributing to the, to the foundation as well. And that'd be awesome. Get more yeah. involved. Like we, we love to do it. And, uh, uh, and if you talk to, you know, you talk to Tammy as, as well, that, that we work with over here. And as soon as you mentioned dog, she's like, give all my money over there. And so yeah, yeah. Saying, she's like, she's like, where do I sign? Take my money. Yeah, <laughs> I know the dogs are, dogs are cool. And the, the, uh, the, you know, the cancer treatments for them, like this Lasardin thing was found in dogs and it, it, they don't like to use the word cures osteosarcoma, but there were some dogs that there's a lot of dogs that yeah. had bone cancer that was normally deadly. Um, that nowadays have all four limbs and walking around, running around perfectly fine. So it, I, I, by the way, dogs don't give works. a shit whether you use the word cure or not. They just want, yeah. they just need yeah, the they help. Just right? play. They just yeah. want to play. They need the help. But what you guys are doing with the kids and the veterans and, uh, and, and the animals, uh, we love that. Uh, and by the way, listen, uh, Goldberg's ranch in Texas, his wife, Wanda, has a nonprofit. She has she fosters animals. She's had I don't know. There was like the neighbor had a giraffe and she's got a lemur. There's a kangaroo running around. There's there's goats. There's the, the feigning goats, which are hilarious, by the way. Yeah, feigning goats are funny. <laughs> they are absolutely yeah. hilarious. And uh, they got a thick skull. So don't think they get hurt. This is what happens to them. And they just got this condition, almost like narcolepsy. And you'll see them. She'll just video. They keep trotting along running toward yeah. you then just drop like a rock <laughs> no i know it's funny yeah for sure it's funny yeah. to see him yeah but, um i appreciate it. are we missing anything else you want to throw out any other plugs we gotta get hit no yeah. man i think we're all good so we, we look forward to seeing you out at uh, long beach we'll see you out there in a couple weeks guys check out the website grahamrayhall.com you can find everything you want you know all the businesses and the charities and the paint protection the cottage stores and and uh, everything that's everything. going on everything that's going on over there is at grahamrayhall.com graham thanks so much i appreciate it and uh, we'll we'll chat soon my friend i'll see you in a couple no weeks. worries for the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.